All right, so today I'm talking about the HTML base element. Now this is an element that you put inside the head of your HTML file, and it's one that doesn't get talked about very much. What it does is it provides a current point of reference for all relative links within your web page. So here I'm loading on localhost over port 5500, the page index.html. So that's this page. It's this beautiful purple color with a picture of um, my dog sleeping. And this is a relative link. So if I look in the HTML here, we have an image tag inside the main. And you can see it starts with the current folder, image, sleep. So that's what it is. Now with the base element, what I can do is I can control every single relative link on the page. So my CSS, my JavaScript, the images that I'm loading, all these things can be controlled by adding a base element. So if there is some other location, if there's some folder that I need to include as part of the path, and what I've done here is I've created two copies of my site really. So there's the index.html, and then at the root level, we've got the CSS, the image, the JavaScript. And then I've got another folder here. And inside of here, there's another copy of the same image, except flipped. Um, the same JavaScript file, mostly, except one is saying that it's the other. And one is saying that it's the one in the root. For the CSS, there's some minor differences. I've got a different background color and text color and font family and font size at, in the root one than in the one that's inside the other folder. So what I want to do here is first demonstrate the base folder, so the, or the base element rather. So we're going to be setting an href value, and we also need to set a target. So a target is saying, what does this base apply to? Now, most of the time it's going to be self, meaning the page that loaded it, but you can use it at times where there's a named frame set. So if you've got a frame on the page that you want to use, or you're within a frame and you want to talk about the parent. Um, so you can use different targets in here for that. Self, the default, the page that's loading it, that's the most common. And in here, href, this is where we provide the base for all relative links. Now it's not going to change an absolute absolute link or if I've got HTTP or HTTPS at the start of a source or start of an href, that's not going to be affected at all by this. But in here, we're going to put, I'm on 127.001 colon 5500. There we go. That is my base value, my base href. Now, if we look at the page, nothing's changed. I can refresh. There's absolutely nothing different going on here. I can open this up, go into the console, and there, yeah, we see that it is the script running in the root JS folder. If I change this to other, so I'm adding this as part of the base value for the href. That means that this href is going to be inserted in front of every relative link. So the CSS, the JavaScript, the images. There we go. I've got the flipped image. I've got the gray background, a uh, serif font. We can see that the script inside the other folder, this is the one that is now running. So I've got the different CSS. I've got a different image. I've got a different JavaScript. And we can even make a quick little script that will toggle between these two things. So when I click on my H1 element on the page, I'm going to take a look at what the base href value is. So base, we need to get uh, a reference to that. Uh, we can do that right up here. So let base equal document query selector inside the head. We want the base. Okay, so if base.href and that's going to be a string value of the whole URL if it includes the word other. We'll just keep it simple. We'll say in this href, if you see the word other, I know where I am, or I know what the value is for the href. It's the one with or without, and we're going to change it. So we will dynamically toggle between these two things. So we'll say it's HTTP 127.001 colon 5500 
just that without the other, or if it didn't have other, we'll put other in there. So we're going to toggle back and forth between these two. And then after changing that, we're going to write it inside the H2 element. So we have a reference right here to the H2 that's in the head. There's no text in it right now, but we'll write it out. Just so that we can see that this is actually changing. So I'll refresh the page. Oh, I forgot one of the slashes here. That's why I was getting the duplicated values right here while the two of them were showing up. So with the two slashes there, there we go. This should work now. There we go. So you can see that we are toggling back and forth between those two values. All right. Now what I want to do is I want to apply that. So I am changing the value right now that's written inside of here, but for this to do anything, we have to target the CSS, the JavaScript, the image after we've done this. So I can remove those elements or I can change the source inside them. So we can say that, uh, oh, actually, let's get a reference to the image as well. There we are, that's our image. And we can say that image So we'll remove that from the page. We're going to get a reference to the link and to the script. We're going to remove those as well. So our link and our script are both inside the head. So we'll get the script and we're going to call remove to get rid of that document query selector. head link. Now I've only got one link inside of here, so I don't have to worry about the targeting. There are no other links that I have inside of here, so I don't have to worry about making sure that it's the CSS one. So with the image, the script and the link removed, now I need to create new ones, put them back in there. So I'm going to take the same value here. This is going to be the value of the new image tag. So we'll say image is now going to be equal to document create element image. Image dot source is going to be equal to the exact same thing. Now I'm not adding a different base value. I'm just saying, hey, here's the relative link. And we'll say document query selector main append image. So we're adding that back on there. And then we're going to repeat this, the same thing with the script and the link tag. Then we append the two of them to the page, both of them inside the head. And I think I already had a variable. Yes, right here, head. So we have that and we can just say head dot append link and head append script. All right, so when we click on the H1 element, we're changing, we're toggling the value of the base, writing out the latest value here, removing the image, removing the script, removing the link tag, creating a new image, a new link, and a new script, and then setting the values back to the exact same thing that they were. Now, I'm not going to just get a reference to these and change the values to the same thing because the source is the same value. And I don't want to take the chance that the browser just assumes, well, the value is the same. I'm not going to do anything about it. I'm going to remove them and recreate them so that it brings these back in. And there we go. As we click on the H1 element, we're changing the base value and it's re-adding the script. It's re-adding the link. It's re-adding the image. And because we have the different value for the base element, it is reloading those from a different location. It is changing the location of those files, even though these 
are the exact same three values that we're setting in our script right here, the sleep main and main. And that's it. That is the base element for HTML. So you can use that as kind of a shortcut if you need to include a folder or multiple folders from your domain. And then you can set that as the base loading location for all of your other folders and files. So if you're looking for a copy of this, if you look down to the description, you'll see a link to the code just with a copy of this code. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. I answer as many as I have time for. And as always, thanks for watching.